laser sights are an essential firearms training tool, clearly correcting and improving the two most important shooting fundamentals, aiming and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. <laughs> National voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. All right, back with you, 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. It's Gun Talk. Yeah, we call it Gun Talk because what else are we going to do? We're going to talk about guns. Somebody said, well, I'll go. let's go all the way back. I was 23 years. Started the show talking to people in the radio biz. They said, well, I, and at the time we had a two-hour show. How can you possibly talk about guns for two hours? Why don't you just run out of things? <laughs> in three hours a week, not yet. But 23 years. Well, they don't understand. They don't understand that when uh, we get together, we talk guns and shooting and holsters and ammo and sights and optics and slings and it goes on and on as well as shooting technique self-defense competition hunting etc we could talk for 12 hours and often half have you ever run into one of your friends who just said i just don't get it i don't get you guys with your guns i don't get you gals with your guns i don't I don't understand that. What do you say to him? How do you explain it? I'd like to know. 866-TALK-GUN. I got to tell you, I think there's a lot of innovation in the firearms world. And we do have new guns coming out all the time. And there's new ammo. But you can still recognize, though, there's there's cool stuff. But they're all kind of similar. I mean, I'm not to dish in anybody. I'm not trying to do that. But I will tell you the area that I think where we have probably two areas where we've had the most innovation. One is in optics, particularly electro-optics. That's brand new. That's all technology-driven. But the other, which is really interesting, I think is in holsters. Uh, A holster is a holster is a holster. Yeah, but it's not really. We've had, with concealed carry becoming so incredibly popular, people are developing holsters, comfortable holsters, good holsters all the time, Uh, different ways of carrying, uh, using techniques, uh, materials that we wouldn't have thought of using before. And a lot of these uh, companies that we know their names of now actually started as, well, garage operations. People just getting together in the garage saying, I'll make a few for my buddies and more buddies, and it takes off. I I think the holster world is where we see a ton of innovation. Uh, joining me to talk about that and some other things right now, Tyler Botts from Alien Gears. Talk about a company that makes some really cool stuff. Hey, Tyler. How you doing, Tom? I am well. Uh, you guys are right in there. Talk about innovative. Uh, you guys just kind of keep going back into the uh, the back room and coming out with cool stuff, man. Yeah, that's right. We uh, we released our, our new Shapeshift modular holster about uh, two or three months, and we're, we're seeing a lot of success with that so far. Right. Shape shift. You might explain what that is so people know, because we're going to spin off from that. But what is the shape shift? Absolutely. Um, the shape shift is a modular holster system that um, you can easily change from uh, the top four carry most popular carry positions. Um, so what this what that means is you can take the uh, take your holster apart and kind of configure it into four different carry positions. You have your inside the waistband for concealed carry. Um, an appendix carry, and then two forms of outside the waistband carry, which is your belt slide and then a paddle slide. And all these different models, they uh, they transform to kind of fit together. And we're expanding the modular holster system to include a shoulder rig, uh, mm. drop leg, um, ankle carry. And so you get all this. Uh, the, the idea behind it is that it's the last holster that you'll ever need, and we've de- designed a product that fits your everyday carry lifestyle. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, there's somebody at your outfit. I don't know if it's you or some like uh, smart guru in the back who just keeps going, well, what if we did, what What if we made an ankle holster and a shoulder holster and a droplet and, and somebody else has got to be saying, are you crazy? 
You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got a room full of uh, scientists that just kind of sit back there and come up with all these ideas. So, uh, it's pretty or, cool. Or just gun folks are saying, you know, I bet we could do this. And then they just start working. On, that's the kind of people you kind of leave them in the back room and just send pizza in now and then and see what they come up with. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk about drop leg holsters for a minute, because I know there are people out there who are going to say, well, that's kind of a military law enforcement type of holster. It's down on your thigh. And that's certainly true. A lot of law enforcement, particularly SWAT, um, if you're wearing body armor, it's a really good technique. But I'm going to throw out another thought for you here. And we had this conversation on the air a few months ago. We were talking about how do you carry a gun when you're wearing a backpack? Right. Yeah, we've got a... uh... We've got an attachment for that with the new ShapeShift modular system. Really? It's a, uh, yeah, it's a backpack holster that uh, it clamps down into the um, into the webbing. Well, we have two actually. One of them is a Molly, um, mm-hmm. which is used for more tactical right. um, military right. things like that. So we're offering that, and then um, yeah, we also have a backpack holster that that clamps down <laughs> onto your backpack for a. Uh, you know, it's a it's more of an open carry solution, obviously, sure. but oh, yeah. it's great when you're when you're out hiking or, um, you know, um, use yeah. your backpack for something. Well, if you're hunting, if you're hiking, you're just out. And when you're out there, man, there is no 911. It's going to be up to you to take care of whatever happens. And you still have to be able to get to your, your pistol, your handgun quickly. Uh, a drop leg would also work for that, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. We kind of designed the drop leg. Like you said, it fits in this this kind of weird uh, category where it could be it could be used for civilian it could be uh you know a government uh entity mm-hmm. that uses it in some way and um so the goal for alien he- gear he- holsters is to expand beyond that concealed carry market um what right. we do best is concealed carry that's what we're known for sure um but we have all these other offerings that we want to um continue that tradition of innovation to these different carry styles and drop leg is definitely a new one that we're excited about a new market to break into I was looking on the website, and I saw the uh, pistols, the drop leg. And it's a whole bunch of pistols that the drop leg's available for. But I want to throw out a thought here. It looked like they were all uh, semi-autos. Is that available for any revolvers? We will be uh, designing new shells for the revolvers probably, uh, I would guess, late this year, early mm-hmm. next. Right now, we're starting out with the most popular semi-autos. Makes and sense. you've got your Glocks and your Shields and things like that. We want to mm-hmm. hit the biggest piece of the market off sure. of that and then we're going to go back and look at uh possibly laser attachments um designing products for uh revolvers and things like that yeah i was thinking about uh people who are hunting or if they're walking around camping or hiking in bear country uh a lot of them are going to want to carry a 357 or a 41 or a 44 magnum revolver so mm-hmm. that's a possibility also absolutely yeah it's, it's one that we're looking into quite a bit and uh, like I said, right now, we just want to hit the, the majority of the, the market, and then we'll go back and, and get some of the uh, the different styles of, of handguns. That'll work. Uh, AlienGearHolsters.com, they can see the drop leg, they can see the shapeshift holster, all the rest of it, see what else. I guess as you guys bring out new things, you just immediately put them on the website, don't you? We do, yeah. We're always, we're always looking to, um, to speed up the way that we release new products. Um, you know, there's no sense in waiting. If we have a product that's ready to release, we, sure. we certainly do it. We put it on the website, and we uh, we start marketing it as soon as we can to get it in front of people. Making them right there in Idaho? Yep. Post Falls, Idaho is where our manufacturing um, place is, and then we keep, uh, you know, the whole the whole team is, is uh, based there. And they used to have uh, be located down in Arkansas right. and Post Falls, but now we've condensed into our uh, Post Falls location. Outstanding. That's uh, winter's just about to get there, my friend. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. I mean, it, we're we're hitting ninety down here, and up in the Idaho, they're hitting highs of fifty and sixty. So uh, yeah, it's a big difference yep. this time of year. Yeah, we'll have snow on the ground before you know it. Exactly, Tyler. Thank you so much for letting us know what you guys are up to. You're always making cool stuff, man. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tom. Thanks for having me. All right, you take care, Tyler Botts from Alien Gear Holsters. AlienGearHolsters.com. Uh, have you ever used drop leg holster? I have never. Uh, honestly, just never done it. I'm not generally an open carry guy. But for a backpack type of situation, I could see that. Uh, 866-TALK-GUN. Let me know if you've ever used a drop leg holster.
In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look, this really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotgunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotgunTalk.com. ShotgunTalk.com. Want your next gun purchase to be fast and hassle-free? Well, at galleryofguns.com, you can search through thousands of models from our huge firearms inventory. Find a great offer from a local dealer that includes all fees and taxes. And there's no need to arrange a transfer. Gallery of Guns takes a small deposit on your credit card, and your gun will be at your chosen dealer in as little as 48 hours. Plus, your gun will be covered by our guaranteed lifetime replacement warranty. Galleryofguns.com. Search, find, buy. It really is just that easy. Responsible owners control access to their firearms, even when they may need them in a hurry. Liberty Safe, the nation's leader in gun safes, offers six models of handgun vaults. Strong, simple to use, open with a key or fingerprint. Put your handgun in the compact vault, lock it away until you need it. Then it's in your hand almost instantly. Pick the Liberty Safe handgun vault that's right for you. LibertySafeHD.com. Everything. This is perfect. This email just pops up. <laughs> I'm going to read the whole thing to you. <laughs> it's from uh, <clears throat> Americans for Responsible Solutions, PAC. This is uh, signed by Mark Kelly, Americans for Responsible Solutions. Another Bloomberg group, I think. As early as this week, the gun lobby may get their vote on legislation to deregulate the sale of of firearm silencers. Other than the gun lobby, manufacturers, and their allies in Congress, no one wants this bill. Okay. The majority of American people oppose the bill. Law enforcement officials have come out against it. Newspaper editorial boards have spoken up. Well, yeah, that's what I want to base my rights on. Here's a quote, it says, from the New York Times, and it quotes this. Quote, firearm sellers eager to cash in on what has become a vanity item argue that silencers should be regulated no more tightly than gun purchases. The latter, of course, undergo a shoddy process with dangerous loopholes that Congress has declined to close. Yeah, every gun purchase from a dealer, a licensed dealer, has to have the okay of the FBI. That's real shoddy. If Congress is going to act, Mark Kelly continues, they should be moving to make it harder for criminals to buy guns, not to make it easier for them to conceal their potential crimes. Their crimes or their potential crimes? Hmm. We have to stop them. We have to stop them. But time is running out. Chip in $3 to Americans for Responsible Solutions. Where's Sally Struthers when we need her? Chip in $3 to Americans for Responsible Gun Solutions to help Gabby and me fight back and stop the gun lobby from deregulating the sale of firearm silencers. The gun lobby is very powerful. 
We've seen their influence on Capitol Hill and in state legislatures for decades. They are no match for us, though, when we stand together. And that's what we must do ahead of this vote. All my best. Mark Kelly, Americans for Responsible Solutions. Okay. (laughs) Oh, goodness. It's a muffler. It makes guns quieter. It doesn't make them silent. You can hear the guns when they go off. Even the Washington Post has said these things do not make guns quiet. They're silent. It's, you know. And the, the very idea that the reason the criminals don't use silencers is because it's against the law. Let's review the definitions. Criminal means someone who breaks the law. So they're not going to break the law on silencers because they don't want to break the law when they're breaking the law? I'm confused. Oh, let's talk to Jim. He's on line three. Uh, Jim's got a question about, I think, the Clark Custom Gun thing. What what, what are you doing there, Jim? Oh, uh, just fine. Thank you. Um, Hmm. What you had, uh, uh, Mr. Clark on there, I believe, a couple of weeks ago from Clark Custom Gun. Uh Uh-huh. Sure did. And you... You were talking about a Ruger 1022 that they uh, customize, I suppose, or, or right for the for, it's called the competition's called the Sportsman's Team Challenge, and it's a three-person team that shoots together in this event. Mm-hmm. What distances do they shoot the the rem fires, the 22 rem fires, and at what size of targets? Sure, good question. Uh, these are uh, knockdown steel targets. And they are, I think there's four banks of them. And you have two on your team shooting rifles and one shooting a handgun. So generally the handgun shooter starts up at the close target. uh, But they go out to 90 yards. And at 90 yards, the target is about one inch. It's a star, which is hard to hit. It's about one inch across, maybe one and a half inches at most. And you're shooting offhand with no rest and no sling. Okay. Well, that's what I wanted to know. I was I was uh, looking at Onshoots rifles, and mm-hmm. I thought, well, gee, I'd kind of like to have a semi-automatic, which Onshoots does not make. Correct. And uh, remembered your uh, program and thought I'd call and ask. Sure, they are. I will tell you, I have a couple of uh, their rifles, these uh, Clark Custom Guns, their rifles, um, one inch, a hundred yards, very doable with a semi-automatic Ruger 1022. It's just amazing how good they are. On shoots makes great rifles, don't get me wrong. But if you want semi-auto, this would be a way to go. I would also suggest, uh, Jim, that you just Google up Sportsman Team Challenge, and you can see the distances and the targets and all the information on that. Appreciate the call, sir. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dave, on line four, out of Kentucky. Hey, Dave. Hi, Tom. Hey. What's on your mind? Well, I wanted to talk to you about uh, H.R. 38, the National Concealed Carry Reciprocity Bill, and uh, Mm -hmm. see what your thoughts on that are, because I've gotten some differing opinions from different people about whether or not it's a good thing. Okay. What are you hearing from people who say it's not a good thing? I would be curious in that. Well, I have heard people say that it is the proverbial camel's nose under the tent as far as federal oversight of National Concealed Carry and I've heard people say that it's uh, an infringement on states' rights. I don't happen to agree with any of that, but I wanted to know what you thought. Well, states don't have rights. Let's start off with that. Only people have rights. States have powers. I agree. Okay. Uh, the states' rights thing is a silly idea in, in the whole concept. All this does is say that if you get a license, it's going to be honored in all the states exactly like your driver's license. That would be like people say, well, you know, each state should be able to have its own driver's license regulations, and they should not have to honor the driver's license of other states. So you'd have to get a new license in every state you drove through. No one would say that. Right. So that's just silly. Well, that's all we're talking right. about. Well, and, and the way I came to this is I, I'm actually a constituent of Thomas Massey, a congressman out of northern Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's been quoted recently as, as criticizing Paul Ryan for refusing to move reciprocity through, but as a as one of Congressman Massey's constituents, I was kind of disappointed to find out that he is actually not a co-sponsor of H.R. 38. Well, jump all over him. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I, I was in contact with his press secretary through email. 
she brought up the state's rights argument. Mm -hmm. Um, And in some of my other conversations online with some other folks, Facebook and and comment threads and stuff, I've heard also heard the argument about the camel's nose under the tent as far as getting the federal government involved in oversight of, of concealed carry on a, on a national basis. Well, the Fed's uh, already controlled gun purchases and everything else. We, Frankly, right now, I will tell you, we have a better chance of getting good laws through Congress than we do uh, getting them through all of our states, because there's some states where things are particularly horrible. So we're, the way we take care of that is we do it through Congress. But, I, you know, to, to paraphrase, uh, it is often a case where in the state's rights argument is the last refuge of scoundrels. Paul Ryan is a weasel, and uh, he is blocking reciprocity. He is an, not a gun guy. He's not a gun supporter. He's not a conservative. And good Lord, we need to get that guy out of there. Right. Now, and I'm no fan of his either, and I'm more than happy to jump on Paul Ryan. But I was really disappointed to find out that Thomas Massey, who is the founder and co-chair of the Congressional Second Amendment Caucus, is not a co-sponsor of H.R. 38. You know, what that, you know what that takes? It takes you and 12 of your friends calling the office, and that gets it changed. Honestly, 12 people will get it changed. That, I'm working that's on it. I am actually in contact with his office, and I'm working on it. But I, sometimes when I talk to other people and I hear some of these arguments, I want to know, am, am I off base on this? And I don't, no. I don't think I am. No, you're, you're not. I, I, what this would do, and that is – it basically just says if you have a carry permit, it is honored in other states. That way, you don't have to go check. As I drive across the country, am I legal? Am I breaking the law? Am I legal? Am I breaking the law? As I cross each state line, that's ridiculous for us to have to do that. And this whole thing of well, their laws are different from ours, so their people may be less. The fact is, people who have carry permits are statistically so unlikely to commit crime. It just doesn't matter. If your regulations are tougher than another state's, it doesn't matter. People with carry permits essentially don't commit violent crimes anywhere, regardless of the uh, requirements, how strict they are, or if they even have any training requirements. Just the way it is. But yeah, I, I think it really is the uh, last refuge of scoundrels when they pull that thing out. 866-TALK-GUN. What do you think? Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. Talking about pretty much anything that has to do with guns, if you'd like to join us, by all means, just give us a shout, 866-TALK-GUN or TOM-TALK-GUN. We'll certainly get you in here. It's open lines. If there's a gun that you would like to know about, uh, she had a guy, interesting, sent me an email. He said he was storing his gunpowder, his reloading powder, in the metal cans, and he stored them in a Coleman cooler to try to even out the temperature swings or something. But when he opened it up, all the cans were rusted. I thought, well, yeah. You trap moisture in there, and you guaranteed a high humidity environment without any fresh air. Um, your gunpowder is it's just fine. If you're comfortable, it's comfortable. Dry and cool is good for ammo and for gunpowder, for reloading propellant, if you prefer. You don't need to store it in special places. Uh, it, it'll only last for decades, decades and decades and decades. You can just store it in a cool, dry environment. Line three, Scott's with us, Carson City, Nevada. Scott, what kind of holster do you have here? Well, I'll mention the name if you like, but it's just yeah. an outside carry. It's an Uncle Mike's. Okay. And uh, I picked the thing up just for use for, for holding my, my pistol at the range. Mm-hmm. Um, what I've got is I've got an XD9. Mm-hmm. And I notice when I put the strap on it and snap it down to hold the pistol in, it's um, it engages the grip safety. Yeah. And I was looking at it saying, um, is this a good idea? <laughs> so I started to think about it. This really bothers me that all of a sudden I have the only safety, I really don't have a safety other than that the 
if it's loaded, on the fact that nobody that the trigger is difficult to get to. All right, let me back up. Um, you use this uh, kind of soft Uncle Mike's holster with a strap that goes over the grip safety when you're taking the gun to the range. Is that what you said? Well, at the range, yes. At the range, are you wearing it and drawing from it? Yes. Okay. This is going to be. be this is be. Do you carry it that way, like for concealed carry or anything? No, this is not a concealed carry gun. Okay. Wh- what? What are you doing? Are you you're not using that holster for competition? So why are you carrying a gun in it and drawing in, at the range? I okay. The only reason is is I, is I realize a place to put the gun so it's not in my hand at the range when I'm not firing it. Okay, it's a gun holder. Got it. Yeah. Uh, you're not shooting from behind a bench. You're just out there. But when you finish, you just need a place. To... Can I make a suggestion? Uh, well, first of all, a question. Is this an organized range or kind of an informal range? It's, there is not a range master. Okay, but right. it has facilities. It is, it is a public range. Okay. It, it does have trash cans. Yeah. Okay, f- easy. Walk over, drop the, tra- the holster in there. Done deal. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a hard but time, my baby. Question is- Am I overreacting? Am I being overly concerned about this, or, does, or am I thinking? Or am I thinking in the right direction? Both. Uh, I think. I think both. I think uh, it's probably not a huge concern, but it's also also like, oh my God, I didn't know they made holsters with those straps that go over them since the 1950s. Um, you know, you need a real holster, especially if you're drawing from it, because pulling a strap off or however it is. Um, the, that wouldn't be a bad holster if you didn't have a grip safety and if it would, weren't depressing it and if you were just walking through the woods and you didn't need to draw your hol- gun quickly. But I would suggest, I mean, you can get a good Kydex holster for about the same price as the cheap Uncle Mike's holster in the $25 range. Um, much better. It's form-fitted to your gun. The gun's going to go with. The grip safety is going to be uh, still working for you. Uh, give that to somebody else, somebody you don't like. Uh, I'm sorry, Uncle Mike's, they make, you know, decent stuff, but not that holster. I just, that's a bad design. I don't care for that at all. I would seriously suggest you get a decent Kydex holster that your gun will go into and click positively in place so it, does, it won't come out on its own if you, you know, want to do somersaults. You think I'm kidding. I actually been to a, a gun school where they, they told you, all right, get on the ground, roll around, do a somersault. Now stand up, now look around the ground. All your gear that's on the ground, you're not going to have that in the fight. It was pretty funny. <laughs> um, I, I applaud you for thinking about it because I, I think you've identified an, a real issue. I would not like a holster that deactivated one of my safeties. Simple as that. Let me run over to John on line two out of Friendship, Arkansas. John, thank you for your patience, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I got you. I I was uh, listening to first of your show. You were talking about the gentleman firing the right of hat gun upside down. Right. And hadn't run into that before. And it was kind of funny back in uh, 1960 when uh, D. Woolen was teaching all of us cowboy shooting. Right. By watching. Uh, he showed us the uh, Curly Bill Brosius spin. Yes. Yes, and, I remember that. Uh, of course, we all had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hey, believe it or not, with a four and three quarter inch SA coat, you can uh, you can get fairly efficient, well enough to hit a an FBI silhouette at seven yards. Yep. Pretty quick. We did it with one hand. I never was brave enough to want to try to do it once, like the TV. Yeah. The but day. So people can look up what you're talking about, that uh, Curly Bill uh, spin, and you shoot the gun upside down. That, that was pretty cool. I uh, appreciate that. John, sound like you've been shooting a long time. Uh, I wanted uh, – you had two callers. I wanted to comment on two things. One was I read, I think, everything your dad ever wrote. Certainly mm. enjoyed it. And uh, two, I couldn't help but uh, – Hear the man before you talking about Jim Clark's little twenty-two Ruger that he's building. Uh, right. The uh, 
Jim Clark, his dad, built uh, my first set of bullseye pistols in the early 60s. I uh-huh. still have my bowling pin and my bullseye gun, as well as my wood cutter gun. And uh, they were the best there was to be had in the day. Yep, excellent. I mean, good guns. Jim built them. And, I mean, a lot of people won a lot of uh, tournaments with Jim Clark pistols. I appreciate the call, sir. i got to keep rolling because we got them lined up today. 866-TALK-GUN get you in here. Let's see. Are we? we yes, we are. I am I'm actually past my break. I need to go there. 866-TALK-GUN. We'll be right back. When someone leaves you their gun collection, you may want a few, but what do you do with the rest? How do you sell them? Who do you call? Well, I call Johnny Dury at Dury's Guns. Whether you're selling one gun or 500, they'll tell you what it's worth and write you a check. Simple, quick, easy, fair. I trust Dury's Guns. Give them a call. Dury'sGuns.com. There's a reason why police officers trust Spear Gold Dot Ammunition over the competition. The same reason you should, too. The ultimate expansion and FBI-tested reliability have proven time and again to protect America's finest. Spear Gold Dot is the number one trusted ammo for police protection. And while it's standard issue for the men and women in blue, it's now available for personal protection. Spear Gold Dot, the gold standard of professional conceal and carry ammunition. The pistol that redefined pocket carry just got even better. The Ruger LCP-2 has improved sights, an easy-to-rack slide, a larger textured grip surface for a secure grip and recoil reduction, and a short, crisp, single-action trigger pull for real-world accuracy. It's so small and light that there's no reason to ever leave home without your LCP-2, a serious pistol in a pint-sized package. Learn more about the LCP-2 at Ruger.com. Since 1937... Ducks Unlimited has led the charge on wetlands and waterfowl conservation. Wetlands reduce the effects of flooding and recharge our drinking water. But perhaps most importantly, they allow us to experience what makes the outdoors so great. Band together to rescue our wetlands. Every crossbreed holster is handmade based on the design invented by our founder. A Kydex pocket molded around your gun for perfect retention. Leather backing for comfort. Specially designed clips allow you to tuck in your shirt for complete concealment. The highest quality mag carriers and belt sturdy enough to hold any gun. Our holsters come with a lifetime warranty and two-week try-it-free guarantee. Crossbreed. Conceal and carry the cross. Crossbreedholsters.com. I tell you what, you you ask questions of things I'd never thought of before. Jim's got one of those on line one out of Clinton, Arkansas. Jim, what what are you wondering about? Maybe you have more time on your hands than you should. <laughs> Tom, thank you for taking my call. <laughs> Tom, there's a there's a zillion of us out there that's got uh, gun safes, mm-hmm. and we keep our guns and our ammunition in those. And my question is, well, and also most of them, or a lot of them, has those. Uh, electronic uh, door locks. Yep. And my question to you or anybody out there that might know is, would they survive an EMP attack? That's a possibility if we ever was uh, attacked. That electromagnetic pulse might knock out the... uh, And then we couldn't get to them. That's interesting. Your answer. I have to... I, I think an EMP pulse would kill it. I do, too. But I want to know for sure. Um, well, I don't know that we can ever know for sure because it's going to be really hard for any of us to trigger an EMP pulse for testing. And if we did, then all of our test equipment would probably go uh, belly up on us too. And besides the whole not getting plutonium and nuclear you know, stuff, but that's that's a whole sideline deal, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Uh, this is quite literally the first time I've ever thought about it. Never occurred to me. I will tell you, and maybe it's part of my old school 
deal. Uh, my safes have manual spin locks on them. Well, you're all, fortunate. Well, all, I, well you, you, know, you can swap them out. Oh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, uh, uh, I don't know what brand they have. It doesn't matter. If you call the Liberty Safe uh, has a bunch of dealers all over the country. If you call your local Liberty Safe dealer and tell them, look, I got this kind of safe. It doesn't matter. I got the electronic lock. Can you put a... Uh, a manual lock in it. They'll say, "Yeah, we can. We'll be come out, and this is what it's going to cost." And they come in and do it. And it's done deal. Thank you, Tom. You're a good man. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. I, every time I talk to the safe people, they go, "Yeah, everybody loves the electronic locks, and you really ought to consider retrofitting and doing that." And I'm going, well, I don't know. Yeah. Good point. And of course, they say a gun safe may shield it, but of course, the lock is on the electronics are on the outside of the lock or out of the of the safe. Huh. Never thought of that. Interesting. Let's see. Uh, Joe's in Jefferson City, Texas on four. Joe, I'd ask the question, is, is it, do we have a responsibility to support local gun stores uh, versus trying to buy on the cheap for people who may or may not be there? And, and I'm not, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer, but I'd like to get your take on it. Well, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong answer either, Tom, but I definitely think that the community should support their local gun dealers because if you don't, these guys are not going to be in business anymore. And there's no guarantee that every individual is going to be able to get their FFL license. So, I mean, I, I think the guys need to stay in business. Well, it's kind of like, and I guess the, the real question is, is how... <laughs> this is where it gets more difficult. How much would you be willing to pay extra to support your gun store? Would it be $50 for a gun? $10 for a gun? At what point would you say, no, I'm going to go get the cheap the cheap one over there? Yeah, that's kind of a slippery slope there as well. Yes, I guess we're kind is. of playing a little firearms tennis right here. Well, you know um, what it is? It, it's the Amazon deal. And how Amazon is putting stores out of business and people buy, and, and I'm as guilty as the next guy. My little Amazon boxes show up on my door and I'm not going down the street and buying stuff that you, know, you might have been able to get from an electronic store if we had any electronic stores anymore. I mean, what? Yeah, right. You know, um, I don't know the answer, but I think there's a thing there, if, it, if that makes sense. I think it's worth I, a conversation. I, I agree. Uh, most of the firearms dealers that I know, they're going by MSRP, and they may bump it a little bit, but mm -hmm. in my opinion, not too far out of the box. Well, and when you need a gunsmith, who are you going to go to? Oh, yeah, that we used to have a gunsmith at that store, the, the one that went out of business, and now you can't get your gun worked on. Or we used to have a place where you could have uh, scopes mounted and, and bore sighted, but they're, they're not there anymore. And my buddy over there that's got his FFL or the online place that I buy from, uh, you know, they don't do that. And, yeah, but I saved $10 on a scope. Okay. Cool. Um, I don't, but I don't know how to mount it properly. Yes. Yes. And I, I don't know. And each person's going to, you know, people, some people are going to say, well, they just need to compete. Okay. Cool. Uh, but when you have overhead, you have rent. You have expenses, you have employees, you have insurance, which is a big nut. Uh, you have utilities, uh, and you it's, frankly, it's pretty hard to compete with a guy who's just selling them off of his kitchen table. And that's going to tick off some people who have their kitchen table FFLs. I get it. But it's a reality. You don't have the expenses, so you can sell cheap uh, versus a store that has all that overhead, but also offers tons of services. The question I'm asking everybody is, is that of value to you? And if it is, what in dollar amount or percentages would that um, value be worth to you? I don't know the answer, but I think there's a there there. 866-TALK-GUN. Would you pay a little bit more to keep your gun store in business?
Hey, don't forget, we're going to have the after show coming up in just a few minutes. If you'd like to be a part of that, call me right now, 866-TALK-GUN, 866-TALK-GUN. Jim and Michelle are here today. You'll be able to uh, chat. I'll get out of the way. I know everyone wants to talk to Michelle. Why not? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Jim, sorry about that. It's, yeah, But you know how it is. <laughs> 866-TALK-GUN. Frank's uh, in Elk City, Oklahoma on three. Hey, Frank, you're on Gun Talk. What are you thinking? Well, uh... There was a serial rapist when I was in college, and a girl in one of my classes bought her a twenty two pistol, and I asked her if she had ever shot much. She had not. And my neighbor was head of the detectives of the police department, mm-hmm. and I asked him where we could shoot, and he said, well, I'll go with you and help you. And I said, well, I'm glad to do it. Well, when he found out she had a twenty two, he knew all kinds of statistics. And he said, told her to get a minimum of 380 or 9 millimeter because with a 22, the statistic was if somebody's within 25 feet of you with a knife, with a 22 pistol, you had a 78% chance of still getting stabbed. Hadn't heard that one. I've heard of the uh, the Tuller rule. For, uh, Dennis Tuller came up with. He said if uh, someone's within 21 feet of you with a knife. Uh, they can get to you and stab you before you can draw and shoot. And every police officer has been trained in that. Uh, the problem with his stat is that it's so variable. Some people will fall down, you shoot them once with a twenty two, Boom, they're just gone. And some people, you could empty a, a box of twenty twos into them, and they were not going to fall down. Uh, and that's true of everything. But I, to your basic point, I agree completely. 380 is my, my bare minimum, bottom line, baseline. 380, 38 special. And there's really good ammo available for 380 now, and it performs close to 9 millimeter, close enough to where it's just fine. Uh, if you do your part, the main thing, and I appreciate the call, the main thing, this is for everybody who carries a gun or has a gun for self-defense, whether it's you or a loved one, your daughter, your son, your wife, is to shoot, 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 shoot a lot. You should be utterly positively, completely comfortable when you pick that gun up. It should feel as comfortable in your hand as the stick shift of your car. You should be able to operate every control on it in the dark. And you you should train so that if it's self-defense, you always shoot three, four, five times. You never just shoot once. Now, yeah, there may be some drills where you draw and shoot, but basically you need to train yourself so that you shoot bang, 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 bang. That's what it's going to be, because that's what it's going to take. Because a bad guy is a bad guy. He's trying to hurt people. He's trying to hurt you. He's trying to get to you. You don't want him to get to anybody. And in half a second, two seconds, whatever it is, he can get to somebody and hurt him badly. Bang, 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 bang. And then maybe bang, 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 bang again. Whatever it takes. Train, train, train. Get serious training. Uh, practice is not training. Let's make sure everybody's understanding what I'm saying. Training is not going out to the range and shooting. Training is taking classes. It's training with, it's getting a good instructor. It might even be, I hate to say this, but it might even be getting our videos, uh, guntalk.com. You can get our videos there. Uh, you can watch a lot of our videos. We have DVDs uh, that you can buy on training, on self-defense, on concealed carry. Uh, they're good, I think, because we produced them. Uh, but also just getting your head in the game and getting the training and then going out and practicing. It's only your life. Well, I don't have time. Yeah, okay, it's just your life. I don't have time. Okay, you're going to be uh, in a wheelchair the rest of your life. It's, I, don't, I just don't have time. Yeah, great. Now do we get to talk about what might happen to your wife and your daughter? Yeah, you have time. You absolutely do. Hey, you want to make uh, have a little bit happier life? Find a purpose for your life. I don't know if it's guns or something else, but find a reason to get up every morning and do something for other people. I guarantee you, you will be a happier, more fulfilled person. In the meantime, take care of your family. Coach them up. You be careful. Hey, we're, the after show is coming right up, 866-TALK-GUN. Be careful out there. 